Blender 5.0 gets Cinema 4D style MoGraph cloner tools, Adobe drops Premiere for iPhone so you can edit from anywhere, and a massive free AE plugin filled with loads of handy presets. It's Motion Mondays, and now for your viewing pleasure, peak AI creativity. I'm a CEO in a porcelain spa. Now, for those of you out there who want to edit with your finger and laugh in the face of Carpal Tunnel, Adobe just launched Premiere Mobile for iPhone with the Android version on the way. It's got a lot of great features, including a full multi-track timeline, 4K HDR editing, animated captions, speed effects, background removal, and AI-powered audio for clear voiceovers. You can even generate your own sound effects with AI. You can add B-roll, transitions, fonts, graphics. I mean, basically everything that you would ever need to edit on the go. One of the cool things is you can actually start a project on your phone or mobile and then finish it on your desktop Premiere Pro. So this feels like this could be Adobe's answer to CapCut, which has been dominating the mobile editing space for content creators for quite a while. So if you are a content creator out there, this seems like a really great way to make quick social media content to promote your work or share behind the scenes stuff without being chained to your desk. And speaking of mobile apps, Cascador just dropped their mobile version for iOS and Android. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with Cascador, it's a full 3D character animation app that lets you animate characters using AI assisted physics tools. And now you can do that right on your tablet. So you can import and rig and animate with your Apple Pencil or even your finger. The AI helps with auto posing and streamlining the whole character animation process while the physics tools keep everything accurate and realistic. Now I think being able to do like legit character animation on an iPad is pretty powerful. So the app works with the desktop version too, so you can import and export scenes between devices. You can test drive the mobile app for free to give it a go, but you can't import or export files or use video references without a subscription. And that's going to run you $7.99 a month or $49 a year. But if you're a Cascador Pro subscriber on desktop, which is $49 a month or $396 a year, you get the full mobile tool set for free. Now, if you're one of those weird people that don't like to pay for things, there's actually a free plugin for After Effects called Bad Effects. And I would say it's anything but bad. It's kind of like someone looked at all the things like plugins and asset packs that you might need and said, hey, what if we just had all this for free and all in one space? So it's got royalty free videos and photos from Unsplash and Pexels, sound effects, music, 10 curated icon libraries with clean vector graphics, trending GIFs, because you know you need that, and stickers from Giphy and Tenor. It also has customizable text animation presets, motion presets, overlay effects like VHS, CRT, and Super 8 looks, and over 400 gradient presets, because why have 10 gradient presets when you can have 400? And they also have theme-based color palettes as well. There's also a bunch of workflow tools thrown in like layer and keyframe stagger, a renamer, project organizer, and some handy easing tools for adjusting your curves. They got animation tools like wiggle, bounce, and overshoot. And the plugin works for both Windows and Mac. So if you're sold, check out the link in the description so you can go ahead and download it. Now for a quick school motion news dump, our accountability group starts today on our all access platform. So if you've signed up for all access, this is what makes school motion courses special. You're never learning alone. So these accountability groups let you take a course with a cohort of classmates and teaching assistants, and you're gonna complete a lesson or homework by a certain day. So everyone's going through the content together, everyone's learning together, going through the same challenges and comparing notes. And it's really a great way to actually finish a course instead of just, you know, letting it sit there. In other news, we've also got a UX motion design workshop coming October 9th with the senior motion designer from Google doing a deep dive into UI UX motion design. Plus, we're going to have our October portfolio review happening October 23rd. So you can always check out what is coming soon on our aptly named coming soon page so you can see all the courses and events that we have on the horizon. And as always, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube right here so you never miss a thing. Now, where are all my my retro video game fans at Lucas Rodell just created this free blender add-on that lets you give your 3D models a 2D pixel art look and it looks super good. So basically you set it up using this preset geometry node setup and from there you can adjust the colors, apply effects and it all interacts with your lighting properly right inside of Eevee. 
So the cool part is, is you can actually export this from Blender to Unity. It's really perfect if you're trying to make some retro style game or just love that pixel art aesthetic, but want to have full control in the space of 3D. So you can grab it for free on Lucas's Gumroad and you can find the link to that in the description. Also, drop me a comment because I wanna know what your favorite retro game is. Mine for sure, Chrono Trigger. It's the absolute goat of games. Come at me. Speaking of goats. <laughs> or gorillas, I guess, I guess a different type of animal. Chad Ashley from Grayscale Gorilla is doing a cool new thing where he's sharing one workflow script a day from all the tools that they've built for GSG Plus members. So he just kicked things off by highlighting a tool called Replace It, which is aptly named. It lets you swap objects with different objects with a single click. Then he showed off Simple Scatter, which helps you scatter objects evenly across surfaces using instances. Of course, all of this inside of Cinema 4D. So pretty handy stuff. And if you head over to their workflow scripts webpage, you can actually see they've got a ton of these. So they got camera scripts, layer scripts, lighting scripts, and random utility scripts. There's actually a lot buried in GSG Plus that people might not even know about. So it's cool that Chad's doing these like PSAs just showing what's available. Now into this week's cool work from across the interwebs. First up is the FIFA World Cup 2026 mascot reveal trailer by Believe Studios, and it's so good. I love the really stylized shading they got going on. And this was all done in Cinema 4D and ZBrush rendered with Redshift. And what really stands out are these painterly materials that give it this unique look. And I'm really hoping they release a behind the scenes because I'd love to see how they achieve that look. And this is the type of stylized work that you typically see with Blender artists pushing all the time. And a lot of people might actually realize you can do this stuff in Cinema 4D too. So really awesome work. And sticking with the stylized rendering, some things Arai Studios, which is a great studio name, made this short film using Cinema 4D and ZBrush for the Snapdragon Summit. So some folks from Maxon were on stage and actually debuted this film to show off the Snapdragon technology on laptops since Cinema 4D and ZBrush now support Snapdragon. And the shading and look dev is just so good. It feels like those high-end game cinematics that you'd expect from like Maya or a Blender. And the CG channel account on X shared some really cool behind the scenes showing some of the character rigs and shading work. You should also follow one of the directors, Chris Theron. He does a lot of awesome viral VFX work on Instagram, really inspiring compositing and effects work, so give them both a follow. And finally, Swarovski dropped a new reel, which means it's an automatic play because everything you do is phenomenal. You probably know them for their Marvel work, film intros, title sequences, and you'll see that they actually worked on the latest Superman film as well. It's just a masterclass in iconic graphics that have defined blockbuster films over the past decades. Swarovski, always a good watch. As always, the links to all these works are gonna be in the description below so you can enjoy them all fully. Okay, now on to what is probably the biggest story this week. Blender 5.0 has been getting some sneak peeks and Andrew Price, AKA Blender Guru, shared some details that got everybody super excited. And that is Blender is adding geometry node essential assets, basically geo node presets that look like they're trying to replicate Cinema 4D MoGraph cloner functionality. There's a new array preset that lets you clone linearly, radially, scatter on surfaces, and along splines. Sound familiar, C4D users? Now here's why this is a big deal. Previously, doing these types of tasks required a ton of geometry nodes and math knowledge, and let's be real, we didn't get into art to do math. Andrew showed this insane spaghetti web of geometry nodes that would have been required to do a simple scatter before, and now it's just a preset that you simply drag and drop. And one of the coolest features is the ability to paint influence on where objects clone. So you just paint a map and objects scatter only where you want them. But wait, there's more. Andrew also teased some compositor presets coming to Blender 5.0. Things like real-time chromatic aberration, halftone effects, animated film grain, all in the compositor with a single drag and drop. Again, previously would have taken a serious complex node setup. Now it's instant and works in real time with Eevee. And it finally seems like Blender is realizing that its steep learning curve has kind of been turning people away. And with this move, they're making these more technical tasks way more accessible to artists who just wanna create. Blender 5.0 should drop around November 11th, and be sure you're subscribed to our channel because we're planning on doing a Blender 5.0 release video when it drops, so stay tuned. Apparently Canva really loves cavalry. 
Now, they just announced Motion Powerhouse, which is a collection of open source tools for Cavalry to help motion designers work faster. The motion team at Canva has been using Cavalry heavily over the past year and built a bunch of internal tools that now they're sharing for free. First up is Quiver, which lets you shoot designs straight into Cavalry from Figma. They're planning to expand support to Canva, Affinity Designer, and more. It supports pasting or importing SVGs in a single click, handles embedded images, gradients, shadows, blurs, editable text, you name it. You can download it for free on their site and they've got a lot more tools coming. So it's really cool to see how Canva is investing in the Cavalry ecosystem like this. Also worth mentioning, we're working on a Cavalry course ourselves, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe so you know when that drops. Now onto our student of the week, Alexis Avalos, who just completed Demo Reel Dash and completely transformed his reel. He said the course opened his eyes to the way of making a motion reel. He always felt that they had to be standard and boring, but the course made him realize that you can have fun with it. He said Ryan Summers helped him add more intention to every cut and better communicate what he wants to do in this field. His new demo reel showcases work from both Demo Reel Dash and Cinema 4D Basecamp. It's really well crafted. He recommends the course for anyone who feels stuck making their demo reel or knows deep down that there's more they can do with the reel, but they just don't know where to start. So really awesome work, Alexis. You can check out more of his work on his website. And if you want to learn more about Demo Reel Dash and all of our courses included in All Access, be sure to check out our website. Links in the description. OpenAI revealed their new video generation model, Sora 2, along with the social media app. You remember that uh, toilet video from the beginning? I mean, how could you forget? Well, that is the Sora social media app. Sora 2 now includes AI-generated audio synchronized with video content and a cameo feature where you can insert yourself or other people into scenes. They say there are identity safeguards. Sure, we'll, we'll see about that. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. But the big improvements are the physical accuracy and realism compared to previous models. And honestly, the demos do look pretty good as far as motion and physics go. They've got improved handling of complex actions and physical rules. I just don't get the whole mobile app push. I guess a lot of people just want AI slop on their phones and hey, let's go with it. So there you go. Another tool in the AI toolkit that's reshaping the industry, whether that's good or bad, depends on who you ask, but it's definitely happening. And finally, Plainly is running their first ever creative jam. And if you're into automation and after effects, this could be right up your alley. So they're inviting motion designers to build end-to-end -end data driven video automation workflows using After Effects and Plainly's API and integrations. The challenge to build a creative workflow that ingests live or public data or AI and outputs videos via After Effects and Plainly. So think sports stats, e-commerce feeds, weather data, user submissions, anything that can generate personalized video at scale. Now the timeline's short, which means you're gonna have to be scrappy-do if you wanna get in on the action. And if you've been curious about automation and wanna work on them skills while competing for real money, check out the link in the description to learn more. And that is it for Motion Mondays. Links to all the stories I talked about will be linked in the description below. Be sure to sign up for our UI UX work workshop later on this month and be sure to check if there's a tech bro in your toilet the next time you go okay that's gonna be it from me hope to see you here back next week i'll see you then take care have an awesome week